What would a space battle really be like? Welcome to SciTrek, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. So, I am a sucker for an amazing space battle. One of my subscribers actually calls it um, spaceship porn, um, but I and I kind of agree with him. It's gratuitous space battles. I actually love that. In Star Trek, it's the favourite bits of my movies. You know, the Wrath of Khan space battle, amazing. Um, Sir, our shields are dropping. Raise them. I can't. Where's the override? The override! Fire! Um, Undiscovered Country, Space Battle, amazing. Star Trek Nemesis, Space Battle, not a very good film, but a good space battle. So for me, I love that. But what would a space battle in reality actually look like? Would it be anything like as exciting as what we see on the screens? Well, I'm going to have a think about what sort of weapon systems I imagine will be available to these big space armadas in the future and what a space battle would actually look like. First of all, let's consider the missile systems. We would probably still have some sort of projectile, self-propelled projectile that we would consider nowadays to be a, a missile or a photon torpedo, if you like, that would be fired at our enemies. Now, the thing is, at the moment, in Star Trek in particular, those ships are a couple of hundred metres apart, firing, and then it's quite a small explosion. Well, we know from our own common sense that, at the very least, a warhead, even if it was a couple of metres long, would have a nuclear warhead, if nothing else. It would have to have uh, a warhead at least more powerful than that. If you had antimatter warhead, for example, it would actually be incredibly powerful. The boom would be, and the shockwave that it would create would be massive. Without some sort of shields, but we'll talk about defences later, without some sort of shields one missile would be enough not just to destroy an enemy vessel but to completely vaporise it. But how could missiles or torpedoes work? If I was firing on an enemy target I would fire my torpedo at it a great distance, maybe even hundreds of thousands of miles and allow the torpedo to just go in that direction. I would only then activate the torpedo when it got reasonably close, then lock onto the target, and then maybe thrust one more time just into the thing to hit the target. Other weapons, though, include potentially railguns. This is something that is currently in development today. A railgun is a very simple technology, really. You have electromagnetic coils, boom, 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 and the projectile is pushed along those and can be fired at incredible speeds. You can also, because there's no sort of mechanical element to them, you can fire lots of projectiles really, really fast. We see railguns in lots and lots of TV series because they are actually a realistic technology. These are weapons that are being developed, and particularly by the US Navy at the moment. But they would also be very, very good weapons at, say, shooting down enemy photon torpedoes or enemy missiles or enemy fighters. They are one reason why, in a realistic space battle, I don't think we would actually see fighters. They could be shredded, like how today fighters don't go anywhere near enemy combat vessels, anything capital vessels large, because they have very large um, radar-guided midi guns on them. Those midi guns are very capable at shredding anything that comes near them. I think I think rail guns would be a def very good defensive tactic, but also actually they would be quite a good offensive weapon because again you could fire a lot of projectiles at an enemy say medium range, say 100,000 miles even, and those projectiles would fly straight and true towards that enemy. Now the enemy might move in the meantime, so you might miss a lot, but they're a very cheap weapon. You're literally, the slugs are literally just lumps of aluminium or something else. You just fire, bum, 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 scatter shot. You just fire a lot and some will hit. And when they hit, they will hit with incredible force. But that moves us on to more sci-fi weapons. 
particle beam weapons are actually, again, something that's being developed at the moment. We mostly base those weapons on microwaves or laser technology. We don't know what that would be in the future, but particle beam technology doesn't really work very well in an atmosphere because you've got atmosphere to hit. Particles in the atmosphere get hit by the beam and they deflect parts of the weapon. It's called blooming. In an atmosphere, energy weapons are very difficult to, to work and not particularly powerful and you need to be reasonably close. But in space, there is very little for an energy weapon to hit. There is particles in space, of course, and space dust and things like this, but barely any and it's very, very sparse. So energy weapons are far more powerful. An energy blast from a high energy weapon like this would travel at the speed of light at three million meters per second. That is, you know, you see on Star Trek again, the phases coming across the beam, you can see it going across. It wouldn't be like that. It would be like, bam, bam, bam. very fast and incredibly long ranges again these ships a couple of hundred meters apart wouldn't look like that you know you could you could shoot at an enemy three million meters away and hit it in a second finally I'm going to very quickly talk about plasma weapons because this is again something that is being developed at the moment the Russian Federation in particular is very interested in plasma weapon technology plasma is basically just very very excited mass it's basically if you take it take a lump of anything and make it excited to pump enough energy into it, you create eventually plasma. Now that is very simple and scientists are going to get angry at me for that example, but very simple level, that's how it works. So you get a plasma weapon, you get some matter, you get excited enough and you fire it at an enemy. In space, I don't know if that would be particularly long range, I don't know if it would disperse, I don't know if the plasma would basically cool in space at long ranges. Um, but it is a weapon system that is being currently developed on Earth, so I'd see no reason why it couldn't be available for space battles in the future. But what would space battles actually then look like? Well, I've already sort of hinted at it a little bit, haven't I, that any space battles would probably be fought at massive distances. The way I was thinking about it was naval battles of old. So naval battles back in the day, World War One, World War Two, they would be fought over days, they would be fought over hundreds of miles potentially. Because one of the first problems you'd have is actually finding your enemy. Your best defense, if you're fighting in space that's very, very big, is to make it very difficult for your enemy to find you. Your first problem in any sort of space battle is going to be finding your enemy and then again, not losing them. Because another factor about fighting in space is that your ships can be very, very fast and potentially maneuver very, very quickly. So find your enemy don't lose your enemy and then actually be able to attack them. You have weapon systems that would be able to operate on massive distances. So waiting for your enemy to sort of like go toe to toe with each other just wouldn't happen. You'd be able to kill each other at hundreds of thousands of miles potentially. I consider the weapon system that would be most interesting for me would be like an active mine. You know the, the missile system I was talking about where you fire it and sort of forget about it? You could drop hundreds of them and just wait for an enemy to come into range or fire them roughly in the direction you know they are and wait for the one of them to detect something. You would have sensor technology obviously that you could use to detect and find your enemy but you've got basically two kinds of um, sensors, active and passive. This is something that submarines have to contend with all the time that if they use their active sensors and that is mean you project some sort of energy out like radar or something like that to detect something. So you send out some energy, that energy bounces off the um, target and you can detect that. But if you do that, you become detectable because you are emitting energy. Passive sensors basically work by just detecting that. So somebody sends out some energy and you detect it. Heat could be a passive sensor potentially because you could use cameras to look for it. So again, if a spaceship though was designed to not emit heat, not emit energy and not emit light, it would actually be very difficult to detect without some sort of active sensor array. That would again lead into the fact that space battles would probably last over weeks. There would be cat and mouse sort of coming in, maybe firing off a few rounds and then disappearing again. It would be 
hunting your enemy down, desperately constantly trying to find them. If you then add in things like shields and defences, again, like saying like using the railguns to shoot down any missiles that come in within range, or using energy shields to defend yourself against energy weapons. If those shields were any sort of effective, then you would have to hit your enemy potentially a lot before making any serious damage, but again, prolonging any battle. So having capital ships that were survivable would be very, very important. Because if a missile did go off, it would potentially destroy you in one hit. We actually saw this in Battlestar Galactica that they used the railguns as a as a as a shield, as a as a hard shield basically. And that when a nuclear weapon then did hit them, the Battlestar was built strong enough to survive that, but it caused massive damage, and they actually nearly lost part of the ship from it. So that would be the case that if you were hit by any sort of hard weapon, and that by, by that I mean some sort of missile or something, that it's going to cause devastating destruction unless you have some way of countering it. So what would space battles look like in reality? The chances are they'd be quite boring. They'd take quite a long time and they'd be fought without you ever actually seeing the enemy. So it wouldn't really work for a good sci-fi movie. I say that, I watch things like, I'm, I watch a lot of old war movies and the tactics and the chess-like way of a battle like this would progress would be really really interesting and from a character point of view having the captain trying to outfox the enemy ah oh, that'd be a great movie wouldn't it so maybe we should actually write a script that is more realistic because it would actually create a very tense drama filled thriller of a sci-fi movie now that's a movie i'd love to see but get in the comments guys, tell me what you think. What do you think a space battle would really look like in real life? Um, what sort of weapon systems do you think we'll have in the future? And what sort of defences do you think could be realistically possible in the future? I'd love to know because I'm sure you guys will think of lots of things I haven't. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, it really helps us out. And if you enjoyed the content and the little conversation that we've had, consider hitting the join button and becoming a fully fledged side trekker. As always, please stay safe. I'll see you next time.